G'day and welcome to another Jadis YouTube video. In this clip, we are going to be going through SR250 carburetor cleaning, maintenance, service, and jetting. So rather than an installation video, this is going to be more of a uh, a, a bit of a guide uh, with some with some tips along the way. And it's going to be difficult to go through all of the issues. So I figure I'll get the video up online and then I hope that there'll be a lively comment thread and then I'll probably complement the video with a bit of a blog post and add some some images with some diagrams and things like that um, up on the Jadis website as well. A few things straight off the bat. One is that the most common issue with getting an SR250 running smoothly is problems with the carburetor. It is quite a complicated part but once you break it down and once you get comfortable with the insides of it and the workings of it you should be able to get your bike running sweet again. Another thing is that, yeah, don't be afraid of opening the carburetor because there's so much information available online and hopefully with the help of this video and the blog posts and stuff like that, um, you'll be able to put things back together. Uh, and thirdly, and quite importantly, which is almost contradictory to the point that I just mentioned, don't be afraid of getting into the carburetor, is use the correct tools. Because if you stuff up threads in the carburetor and if you stuff up jets, the, the jets are made of brass and that, that's a soft metal, don't fuck those things up. That's really annoying for the next person to work on and it's also going to shit up all of, your, all of your settings inside your carburetor. So for God's sake, get the right tool. It's going to make a big difference. Um, and if something's not turning out, uh, go through some of the advice on the blog post that I'll put up about, about being able to remove some some hard set screws and jets and things like that. I'll get some close up shots of this and and um, and we'll just get on with it. So a quick introduction to the SR250 carb. If you know about carburetors and you just wanna know about this one in particular, um, I'll put a jump link uh, in the description so that you can skip ahead and, and get on with working on your carb. But uh, the SR250 carb is actually very similar to the XS650 carb which is great for us SR250 lovers because it means there's quite a few spare parts available. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. And this is actually a CV carb, which is, uh, stands for constant velocity or a diaphragm carb. And a lot of bikes from Japan around this era, 70s, 80s, were CV um, carburetor bikes. And the advantages of that are that it takes up for minor uh, differences in altitude and weather and air conditions and stuff like that because the bike only takes in as much air and fuel as it needs because your throttle is not a direct, does not have direct impact on the slide itself. Rather, like a modern day fuel injection system or a throttle body, your throttle action moves a butterfly in the carb. So even if you whack the throttle open to uh, wide open throttle from idle, the engine is only going to suck in as much air as it needs because the, the vacuum that's created with the air passing through the carb lifts up the slide with the help of the vacuum created in the diaphragm. So what that means, it's a, a very um, effective system for four strokes to relieve bog which is when you whack open the throttle too fast and the engine can't keep up. Yeah, as I said, a lot of Japanese bikes had these carbs and even Harleys for a, a very, very long time. But it's not the most advanced carb these days. You've got pumper carbs and things like that. But um, I like this one. A, lot of, a bunch of other people have tried different carbs on SR250s with varying results, but we've had really good results with this carb with a few minor modifications and um, many hours of dyno testing to prove it and we've even installed uh, an air fuel meter or an oxygen sensor onto our uh, exhaust header and done a lot of jetting tests and stuff so we, we, we're pretty sure we know our stuff. So yeah, mentioned the advantages of these, these kind of carbs and there are a couple of disadvantages but uh, we figure the advantages outweigh them. Uh, disadvantage, well there's pretty much one main one and that is lack of throttle response. So like I said before, like when you whack open the throttle the diaphragm is going to take some time, or the engine is going to take some time to catch up to the amount of air supply that it needs. Um, so you're not going to have a direct impact on, yeah, you're basically going to have delayed throttle response. And the second one is because you have a butterfly in the throat, you're obviously taking up a certain amount of 
surface area for air, throw, air flow through the carb. So I don't know what that is. It's maybe 10% of the whole throat is taken up by the butterfly itself, which means that it's it's not 100% optimized for air, th air flow over the jets and air flow into the engine in general. Uh, so those modern day pumper carbs usually have a flat slide and the air flow, uh, the CMF max through those carbs is, is quite a bit higher than these carbs. But um, yeah, like we said, this carb does the job really well. We like it a lot. Okay, first things first, getting into the carb. This carb uh, has been worked on a lot and is pretty tricked out and refurbished. So we'll take another carb that hasn't been worked on so much for an example. Um, and as I mentioned previously, uh, get the right tools. It's going to make your life a lot easier working on these carbs. Um, and by the right tools, I mean bits and heads that match the heads of the screws. And I've mentioned this in another JDS video. Most of the screws on Japanese bikes are JIS head screws. And if you don't know what that is, uh, look it up, Google it, and I'll also put up a, an image on the uh, web page on the blog post as well. Here I have some JIS bits to work on the carbs and work on engine parts on the bike. Um, if you're a cheap bastard, and you don't want to wait to get those JOS bits. You want to match the Phillips head or the cross um, screwdriver bit to the size of the head. And you're going to need to use a lot of force to get these screws out. So the top one's here and the bottom one's here. Um, and yeah, I don't advise doing that. But if you are a cheap bastard, when you try and back these screws out, you're going to have to put a lot of force into the screw without stripping it here. And that's what's good about having the correct JIS bits is that they're way less likely to torque out so they're much easier to back out, to screw out. So we will take these screws out, take these screws out and we'll start dissecting the carb. Another thing is you might wonder why I have my impact driver here and it's not because I want to hit the carb or hit the screws to be able to get them out it's because this larger diameter here means that you can hold on to the impact driver or in this case I'm using it as a screwdriver much better so you can actually put a lot more force onto that screw head and a lot more torque in your wrist and in your arm to be able to remove that that's actually helped me a lot over the years to get um, pretty stubborn screws out I guess I missed a bit of a step here, but it's probably quite self-explanatory. And that is, if you're going to be on the going to be working on the carb, you'll want to drain it, and you'll probably want to drain it on the bike, or at least get it off the bike, keep it vertical, and unscrew this drain screw here. And that has a tapered end on it, which pushes into an orifice at the bottom of the float bowl here. And when you back that out, it has an O-ring, so when you back it out, it's not going to leak there. Rather, the the fuel is going to drop out this drain tap here. Uh, so drain that out. This screw here is also going to be just as stubborn as these ones here and here. So like I mentioned before, put a lot of force into the head of the screw as you wind it out. And you could probably even get a flat bit, bit for your impact driver to be able to put extra torque on that. Luckily I have managed to get this one out. And we can back that out and then I would drain the fuel out. This is completely dry and empty now but just in case you hadn't done that already. I think it's probably best we do this step by step. So I've removed the four float bowl screws and then you can take the float bowl off and you can inspect and check to see the condition of the float bowl gasket which in most cases will probably be okay if it's in one piece but if it's sort of split started to let go and you've ended up and you've left some pieces on the carburetor itself it's time to replace that and you're going to want to scrape all the remaining gasket off, get a new one and install that. Uh, if the bike hasn't been worked on for a long time, <clears throat> you're going to see a lot of shit in the float bowl. And most of that shit is going to be stuff that has come from the fuel or your, or your tank. And uh, in a lot of cases it will be fine um, rust particles. So there will be sort of a orangey reddy colour and they'll generally gather right at the bottom here where that, where that drain tap was. So you want to clean that out. You can clean that out with fuel or 
get a, um, a can of carburetor cleaner which has slightly higher pressure spray and is, and is pretty safe to work on carbs with and you want to clean all that out um, and the same with the items around here let's put that aside once you've got that off you're going to want to be careful with this part of the carb because it can be quite sensitive you don't want to bend any of these brass inserts or mess up the settings of the of the float here next step of cleaning the carb you want to disassemble the float assembly and that's held together with a pressed pin through these two aluminium bosses here on the carb now be super careful removing this pin what it what they've done what Yamaha have done is they've pressed it in from one side probably with a special jig or a tool and then on the other end they've swaged the end which holds it in place so to remove that it's not just going to come out you're going to have to punch it out and you'll want to punch it out with a with a special well it doesn't have to be special but a, a metal punch but when you do that when you tap it out be be gentle and make sure that the boss is supported so you want to support both bosses on the edge of a table or set something up in your vice or something like that because if you break one of those you've fucked your whole carb so be careful punching that out um, I've removed this before so I should be able to pull it out with pliers okay I've successfully been able to remove the pin here that holds the float assembly in place and when you lift out the float you'll see that the plunger or the valve float valve should be attached to this and that's removable but we'll leave it there for now and later on when it comes to adjusting float height which by the way you shouldn't have to do it should be set from the factory and not have changed over time but this little metal tab here can be bent to adjust float height um, and here's another JIS screw if you've got shit in your carb it'll be because this filter here has failed or the mesh in it is not fine enough which is a problem so if you plan on continuing riding and work on your working on your SR I recommend installing an inline fuel filter that will help a lot of shit going through the carb so I'll get my JIS bit, undo that. This is just a little bracket that holds this assembly in place. You can see that's a pressed metal part with its screw. And this should be able to be removed, which has an O-ring to form a seal. And that's the fuel inlet through in this passageway here, which comes out through here. This is clean because I have actually cleaned this carb, carb several times. But you see this is the gauze and this is the only fuel filter. Oh, there's, in, there's actually one extra filter, a gauze filter in the fuel petcock on the tank. But it's just not fine enough. Um, so you want to clean that if it's all dirty uh, with the carb cleaner and blast some high pressure air through it also helps. Uh, once that's done, or you can clean this, this passageway through here too, you'll probably see a bit of um, uh, a collection of shit in there as well. So you can put that back once you've cleaned that up. While we're at this stage of the carb, we may as well check our main jet and our pilot jet. And our pilot jet is hidden down in this uh, countersunk piece here or this tube and our main jet is this one here and the stock settings are a 47.5 pilot jet and a 122.5 main jet and unless you've changed anything in the exhaust or the intake system uh, you'll want to leave that the same uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video get the right tool for the job because these are soft and they're stubborn to get out sometimes and if you strip these you've fucked it for the next person and that's a prick of a job so <clears throat> I've actually got this flathead screwdriver that fits a pilot jet perfectly I can grab a pilot jet over here and I know that it fits perfectly because I can check like this uh, but the bit itself was too wide for this orifice here so I've ground down the sides this is a good tip grind down the sides of the screwdriver so that you can get deep enough into that orifice there and with the other screws that we've removed so far put a lot of force in this direction as you back it out a lot and that will lessen the risk of stripping the head of it so you can remove that jet 
it's probably pretty messed up from previous owners anyway. Um, and check the orifices, spray it with some carb clean and then some uh, compressed air. And if it looks all good and the jet is a 47.5 or the stock, you can put that back in place. And as with taking it out, when you're screwing it back in, be careful. Don't do it too tight because you'll strip it. Just make sure it's sitting in place and, and nip it up hand tight. Um, if you are changing anything in the exhaust or the intake, we have jetting settings for yeah various setups. But that's the change of pilot jet. Same thing for the main jet. Match the head of the screwdriver to the detail in the jet itself. A lot of force on it. And then remove that. Check that one. Spray it out with some carb cleaner, compressed air. If it's all good, put it back in. And if you're changing it, yeah, swap it out for the new one, whichever you've uh, decided to or whichever advice you've been given, follow that. So once you remove the main jet, you can either put it and cleaned it, you can either put it back in place or go even deeper into the carb. But to go deeper into the carb, we'll remove this washer because that's just a spacer. We can remove this here as well and clean that, but we need to take the top off the carb. Same process as before, a lot of force on the head before you start trying to back it out. Remove those. Once you've removed all those four screws, be aware that this cap is under pressure from a spring on the inside. So keep a finger on that, get rid of the throttle bracket, and carefully lift this cap off. It might be stuck because the diaphragm is made of a rubber material, so you might, you might need to give it a whack on a, or a tap with a plastic part of the screwdriver to get it started, and then it should come off. Place the cap aside, here's the spring we were talking about. By the way, don't mess with the length of the spring. That will do irreversible um, changes to the carb. And I know some people, you know, there's a lot of information online about, you know, getting quicker throttle response if you make uh, the, the spring different lengths or cutting pieces off it, stretching it. Don't fucking do that, that's stupid. Um, and a lot of old carbs, this diaphragm here, will be damaged. It might have some pinholes in it or it might even have bigger holes, but that is a huge cause of problems with the engine running because the diaphragm is not gonna get enough vacuum and it's not gonna lift in the way that it should. So if you have holes, you're gonna need to replace that. And we actually offer these really awesome aftermarket diaphragms here, which you can replace onto the existing slide. So in instead of replacing this entire setup here, which is super expensive, instead of replacing this part here, you actually cut off the existing diaphragm and replace it with this one here. We can go into more detail on that later, but I'll also have a link to the web shop for those parts. That's a really good deal, and these are super strong, super reliable. We've done all sorts of dyno testing them with them as well. They perform just as well, if not better, than the stock one. Be careful with that assembly. Set it aside. Now we have access to the uh, needle jet, which is this long guy here, um, and we can actually press that out now, which will come out this way. Take the head of a cross screwdriver or your JAS bit and, and slightly push that out, and it should come out through the other side. Just with the process of the pilot jet and the main jet, Clean this out, some of those small orifices there might be clogged with shit. Um, spray it out with carb cleaner and then compressed air. And if you think that's good, you can put this back in place, put the washer back on, and put your main jet back in place. We'll do that in a second, but right now I want to show you the air jet. Now, this is an air jet here, and it's the Third, one of the only three jets that you can change in the SR carb. There's another jet here, 
on the inside of the throat or the opening of the carb, but that's pressed in place. You can't remove that and you can't adjust that. So we won't we'll ignore that entirely. But this is an air jet and we have experimented a lot with this uh, in our dyno testing and we've, we've changed it up and down and all over the show and it had zero effect on performance, zero effect on the air fuel ratio, even with, you know, um, uh, special tools that pick up the lambda or the um, the uh, yeah the air fuel ratio from the exhaust, changing this did absolutely nothing. So leave that at stock. Um, it's 160 a stock. Just leave that in place. Um, if you want, you can get your correctly sized screwdriver. You can screw that out, and again clean it with carb cleaner, compressed air, put it back in place. While you have it out, or even now if you decide to leave it in spray some uh, carb cleaner in there and some compressed air through it. You're, you're not going to do any damage to the carb now that the diaphragm is out of place. Uh, which is also brings us to another point, is that you can clean the carb in this state really nicely without running the risk of any damage. So yeah, carb cleaner, compressed air, get in all the orifices, orifices and clean it all out nice and good. This has ended up being a bit out of order really, but while we've got the carbs stripped down to this level, um, we can look at the choke assembly, which uh, actually there's very rarely anything that goes wrong with that. Uh, and a lot of old carbs, this lever would have broken off. Uh, it still works just the same, obviously, but there's a pin in here that holds that on. If yours is left, you want to push that pin out, take that off, and then you can get a socket over this here, I think it's a 13, and remove that and clean that. We're not going to do that here because it's pretty straightforward and in most cases is not necessary. But the next and very, very important uh, detail of the carb that I would like to point out is the air fuel screw. And um, there's a lot of uh, information online about air fuel screws. Sometimes they're uh, called air screws, sometimes they're called fuel screws. But the bottom line is what they do is they adjust the amount of fuel and air or the mixture that goes into the bike when the throttle is closed and just when you snap it open. So low throttle and idle. Um, and to set that, it's always set based on or counted in turns of the screw out from stop. And in many cases it's down to the quarter, so you can say oh, it's, it's screwed out two and a quarter from bottom or three and a half or or something like that. I think some US versions of this carb actually had this blocked off, a small aluminium plug in place here. If that's in place, you'll want to screw that out or remove that to be able to get access in this. None of any of the carbs I've ever worked on have had that in place. I've always had straight access to this. However, in a few cases, this has been very stubborn to get out or completely fucked by the previous mechanic or owner. So don't be the person to fuck that up. Again, get the right bit. And if you want to do some service on it, screw that all the way out. Wait, 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 wait. Do not move that screw until you put a screwdriver on it and count how many turns this has turned out from the bottom. If your bike was running good, you want to maintain that count. So in this case, I line the screw, screwdriver up with, it's on the diagonal, and I count in half turns. One half, one. One and a half, two. Two and a half, three. Three and a half, yeah, it's three and a half out from stop, because now it's, it's screwed all the way in. Um, and now I'll write that count down, it was three and a half. And then I'm going to remove it entirely and show you the assembly, what the assembly looks like. And it constitutes of the screw itself, which is a special screw with a taper on it. Um, a spring that actually puts pressure on a washer, which is way down inside there. Sometimes it's hard to get out. Uh, and underneath that washer is an O-ring. And that maintains an airtight seal against this shaft right here. And this taper here adjusts how much fuel and air comes into the carb when the throttle's closed through these, oh fuck, it's hard to see, but there's some very small, tiny drilled holes here. 
Once you've removed that, you can also clean these orifices. And if you want, you can try and pull those uh, that washer and that O-ring out and clean them, check the condition of them. If the O-ring's worn, you're going to have problems with idle and off-idle throttle response. So you'll want to replace that. And God forbid if there's anything wrong with this, that sucks as well. That's going to mess up your settings. So you'll need to replace that too. We actually have a complete rebuild kit, which I'll go over uh, more later in the video or towards the end. I'm going to put this back in place. I'm going to screw it all the way to the bottom. There. And then, as we did before, we're going to count turns out. Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Boom, that's back to your setting that it was when it was on the bike. Okay, we've covered uh, a lot of the very important parts of the carb. Uh, I'll just point out another couple of parts of the anatomy. That is the uh, throttle screw, which doesn't really affect anything in the carb. Rather, it just sets the amount that the butterfly is open, which will set your idle. That works in conjunction with your air fuel screw. Uh, but don't confuse the two. Uh, they do very different things to uh, your carb, very different things to the running or the idle of your engine. Uh, here's the butterfly lever that connects to your throttle cable. And in most cases, 99% of cases, you won't need to mess with this assembly, uh, which is held in place with a C-clip or a circlip here, and two screws through the middle on the butterfly itself which I have modified in this case it will look more like here's a stock one here look like that those screws are a pain in the ass to get out you will have an absolute nightmare getting them out because on the back side of them they are swaged uh, which means that they're they're pressed over so to get them out you actually have to destroy the end of the thread uh, if you're not having any problems in this area of your carb I don't recommend working on it at all just leave that in place if you do have problems yeah mention it in the comments or check our blog post and go into further detail there at this point I'm pretty happy with the state of the carburetor it's cleaned uh, I've inspected all the the small intricacies and the cleaned the orifices and parts like that so I'm going to start putting it back together and I'll just leave the camera rolling for when I do that. When putting the float assembly back in place it reminded me that we should check our float height which as mentioned earlier uh, shouldn't be any different from stock there's no reason that would that that would have changed over time and uh, you really shouldn't adjust that if you want a richer or leaner mixture there's much better ways to do that um, via the main jet and the uh, pilot jet um, there's a method in the manual whereby you with the carb on the bike and the float bowl in place, you attach a, a clear tube and you're able to um, let the drain go a little bit and then what you end up seeing is the, the float height based on that and there's a picture in the manual which shows that. That's not super practical and it makes it hard to adjust. So we have taken some measurements and the float bowl height uh, measured in traditional methods from this gasket surface here to the highest point on the float when it just engages with the float valve. Uh, there's some really good information online on how that should be measured and, and where that should be measured to. But in the case of the SR, I'll try and get this on film if I can. But measuring from the highest point on the float to that gasket surface should be 23 millimeters when it's just starting to engage with the with the plunger 
So that's 23 mil. That information will be on the blog post as well. You can do that with the vernier calipers or you can do that with a metal rule. Depends what you've got at hand. So once you've set that and you've put everything back in place here, you're happy with the jetting settings, everything's clean. You've cleaned the float bowl and you've replaced the gasket potentially if needed. You can put that back in place like so and do those screws back up and that will complete this side of the carb. bottom half of the carb is now clean and assembled. Now before we start assembling the top side of the carb again we will take a closer look at the diaphragm assembly. Okay, uh, I might have to make a separate video entirely of replacing this special diaphragm that we offer. Now we can open up the diaphragm assembly and take a look at those components. So with your JIS bit these screws are very difficult to get out and they sometimes corrode closed, so the threads corrode inside this housing. Um, so uh, with the other screws, use a lot of force to remove those. I'm going to remove those two screws. Once those two screws are removed, those completely out of the way, we'll be able to see this assembly. So with the two JS screws with lock washers, we have a fastening plate which holds the rest of the assembly in position, which consists of which consists of a light spring, the jet needle, a washer here a circlip and a plastic doohickey <laughs> spacer thing which also acts as a guide so that when you put this in place that little plastic boss here lines up with this hole here so it always lands in the same position and uh, there's usually not anything that goes wrong with these uh, jet needles sometimes they can be worn which can, can cause some uh, some engine running problems uh, but it's more likely that the uh, needle jet will be worn, which is the uh, opposite piece of this. Uh, that guy down in there, that can overlies, and that will cause really funky jetting settings, uh, mainly from idle and up to half throttle, because the bike will get more fuel than what you've jetted for because of the fitment of this needle into that orifice. Um, we have uh, replacements for those and this in these kits that I've mentioned before. But I would like to point something important out here with this needle clip position. In this needle clip position, there's, there's just so much information online about this, but um, about moving it up and down for different settings. Uh, you move the clip position up, which then drops the needle and doesn't allow as much fuel through the main jet, uh, which gives you a lean mixture, and then vice versa for moving the clip position down. What we found, uh, and this may be specific to the SR and this carb, but what we found is moving that position just moves the bad spot of jetting up and down the throttle RPM range. So if we would move it up or down, we, would, we might fix uh, the flat spot that we had and make it sweet but would just move the flat spot to another position in the RPM range. So what we decided to do was leave it in the middle and get the jetting right with the pilot jet and the main jet and the air screw and that made all the difference. We were able to get super clean running from idle all the way up to wide open throttle by leaving that in the middle position and I highly recommend you do that. Okay, so we've inspected those components. It's time to put things back in place and remembering that this plastic spacer, doohickey as I called it before, goes underneath the clip. Um, 
and then the washer goes on top of that which provides a nice flat landing for the spring to go on top of but we drop that down here and feed it through the hole and make sure that that plastic boss lines up with the hole so we rotate that around until it drops into place which gives enough space for the spring to come down on top of and you might have to poke that around to get it to land in the correct position even with the help of a screwdriver perhaps so drop our fastening plate on top So we reassemble this, getting those two screws back in place. Be careful when you're doing them up not to strip the heads. Just button them up hand tight. Now I'm happy with this assembly, it's time to put it back in the cup and uh, you want to make sure that I'll grab a stock diaphragm so that you can see there's a small rubber tab here which lines up with the indentation on the top of the carb here and that's important to line that up because these small holes here uh, are important for the function of the diaphragm itself and the small hole according to the indentations uh, should be on the intake side and the large hole should be pointing towards the engine side of the carb. And when you replace that diaphragm for one of these aftermarket ones here, you need to make sure that you make a mark. You can see I've got a white mark here around the area of the top of this diaphragm so that you know that when you put this back in place, you're going to end up with those holes in the correct location. So small hole to the intake, large hole to the engine like that and then you press you're going to want to make sure that you press this down and get that nice airtight seal all the way around and then don't forget your spring that you've left in completely stock condition uh, and then your cap in place remembering which way it was uh, previously uh, which I can deduce by the markings on the side of the hat here it was on the throttle side with the throttle lever or the throttle bracket you can put that here and then I'm going to put those four screws back in place Now we've done a complete inspection and service of the carb, it's ready to put back on the bike. And because we have the internal jetting set now, the only thing that's left to adjust on the bike is the throttle screw and the air screw. And I could almost do a separate video on that, in fact I'll do that, um, showing how to adjust that um, to get a nice idle and good off idle throttle response. Um, I'll put this aside and just go over a few things that we are offering on the web shop now um, because we know that these carbs it's kind of hard to find some parts especially the tricky parts like this uh, float bowl screw here and uh, some of the jets the jet needle and the needle jet and the clips and washers and things like that so we're offering this Keister uh, refurbish carb refurbishment kit and um, these diaphragms which I mentioned earlier and then we don't sell jets individually but we sell matching jets to uh, along with our exhaust kits our intake kits and our full performance kit so these are going to be up and available on the web shop and if you have any questions about these products or actually about this video in general just hit us up and we'll get back to us as, as, as soon as possible um, Thanks for watching and happy wrenching and happy riding. Cheers.